Northern California, we call this Pope Pole. Woke up at 4.30 in the morning, out the house by five, got here at six, and low tide is a negative 1.7 at 6.30. So I have a couple hours to poke around with this Pope Pole, attach the GoPro on there, just so you guys could possibly see what bites. Pretty excited. It's a great opportunity to come and check out these tide pools and see what types of things are exposed when the tide gets really low like this. This really reminds me of, of the abalone we caught and ate. It's one of these snails that you can find when the tide gets low. look down here this is actually a half open starburst sea anemone and some sea anemones sting uh, this one doesn't sting ah! nah just playing it doesn't sting it feels a little sticky actually because they do have stingers but they don't really work on humans because our skins really thick but I mean they do sting and capture their prey uh, with those stingers. Here's a, another small little one. That one's not open. But uh, when the tide comes in and the waves wash in, these guys will open up and uh, they look pretty cool. And they're called starburst sea anemones. So let me just show you. Cut a little small piece of squid for bait. This is sort of just the, the tentacle part. And this is just a huge bamboo pole a coat hanger tape and then I have a two watt hook tied on here to 50 pound mono that's how my bait's gonna look and this mono leader is just a few inches long not too long let's just go find some fish and some eels again peak low tide is at 6 30 let's see what time it is right now 6 36 so it's peaking right now that low tide is peaking. I gotta get out there. Uh, it doesn't look like I can go anywhere from here. Let's go try to get up there. Uh, these rocks are slippery. It's kind of hard when you have a backpack on like 25 pound backpack or something like that all this gear on me ah. all right i'm up i'm up Whew. crazy to think that all this is usually covered in water okay man gotta watch your footing looks like a decent little way down We made it, we made it. Now let's straighten this guy out. And uh, let's go, first dip. You gotta be kidding me. Man, it's actually kind of funny to me. Kind of sucks, but uh, I don't know, man. Just my luck, I guess. Now I'm gonna have to tie a ghetto rig because I don't have a spare coat hanger hanging around. All right, guess we'll try this again. No coat hanger this time. 
Yep. You can tell this place is normally covered and filled with water because of these guys here. Oh, this looks like a good hole right here. You know why? Because you get right under this ledge. If you've ever gone spear fishing or or even seen videos of spear fishing, fish like to hide under these ledges. This looks like a deep, dark hole. Just poking it. Oh yeah, these spots are looking really good. Look at this deep, dark hole. You can't see underneath, you know. Surprised if there's no fish in there. See those fish? A little goby or something. big rock crab in the water. I wonder if I can catch it. So I am going to try to catch this rock crab by hand. And that guys is a female rock crab. Look at that, full of eggs. Those are the eggs. And and that apron right there, it's a little wider than the males, which is more triangular. So a really really healthy looking rock crab. Look at these big claws. Really big pinchers. I don't want to leap, get out the water for too long. It's pretty comfortable there, and it's got eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and return it back to where it was. Now that guys, that looks like a big male rock crab. Those claws are huge. Look at that guy. His claws are huge. I'm gonna catch him. You know, I heard they blow those bubbles when um, they're out of water for a while. And that's how they oxygenate uh, their gills, essentially. Oh, look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. He looks pretty mean. Always grabbing them from the hind legs like this, they can't get you. He's grabbing on, he's holding on to that rock. This guy looks like a male. Let's see, yep, there you go. The apron I was telling you about, this one's triangular, right? And so you remember that female was rounder, made to carry those eggs. Oh yeah, I got an eel on. Oh, I got an eel. I have me a little seafood lunch. I just pulled this guy out the hole, and that's exactly what I was going for, these monkey face prickleback eels. 
they're actually not even real eels. They're part of the rockfish family. They're pretty cool looking. They have a very distinctive hump on their head. And right behind their eyes, they have that banding pattern. And then they also have some red dots on them. They usually eat algae, but if you put some squid in front of them, they just can't resist. And they're slimy as hell. And these guys will be fine out the water for a while. They could breathe up to 35 hours outside of water. You know, they're used to the tide going out and they need to survive. And if the tide goes out and they're trapped in those holes, they can breathe and they can live. So they could grow to be two and a half feet in length. See the way their fins sit like that? It's kind of like they're, they would be sitting on the bottom of some rocks or in crevices and they, they kind of hold on with these uh, pectoral fins. Very similar to rockfish. They're actually related to rockfish. They're not even a, a true eel. No spines, you could go the opposite way of their dorsal fin. They're super slimy though. Look at that. That's what happens if you stroke the eel. So I caught a few crab. I took one claw from each of those crabs and, and I let them go. There has been issues in the past before with domoic acid and, um, and the crab butter. And so uh, I wasn't gonna cook them whole. I just took one claw from each. So I have four claws here. I have four claws here. And I'm just gonna boil these claws. Eels on the smaller side, but actually that's fine with me because uh, those big eels, I'm probably not gonna eat all of that meat right now. And so that, that's probably the perfect size for me to eat right now. But look at some of these claws. These are monsters. Look how fat that is. Crack them a little bit, just so when you boil them, it's easier to get the meat out. Water's at a rolling boil. It's 14 and a half. So the first thing I'm gonna do is dispatch this eel. If you get a good grip, that is, swing the eel and then smack the head on a very hard surface and that's gonna knock him out instantly. If it's not gonna snap his vertebrae, which is like an instant and no feeling, um, it's gonna hit his head pretty hard. It's gonna be graphic, so skip this if you don't like this part. One, two, three. I'm gonna do it again for good measure. One, two. Now that the eel is out, pretty much just like filleting a fish, I'm gonna cut right behind the pectoral fin. I have a sharp knife too. And actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna gut this guy because I remember how gross it was if you don't gut him and you get some of that some of the guts in the meat actually tastes really gross just can't get a good grip of this guy he's slipping all over the place and it should just yank out salt, some butter, taking a page out of Matt's book, some ground black pepper, a lemon, and I also have some freshly chopped garlic right here. I rinsed the fish already, some ocean water, so it's probably already a little salty, but a few brines, some pepper, always love pepper. First things first is some butter. I'm gonna add these freshly chopped garlic in here. So it's gonna be that buttery, garlicky goodness. So that garlic gets nice and brown. And then the fish go in here. So then I'm gonna have that buttery, garlicky, zesty goodness after I squeeze a little bit of lemon in there. Oh my goodness. That golden brown. Woo. Garlic, butter, lemon. And my crab claws are all done. 
It's been a long day. Walked for more than five miles today on those rocks. I'm ready to enjoy a good meal. Got my lemon, got my fish, monkey face eel. Squeeze some lemon all up in there. First the eel. It's that butter, lemon, and garlic. First bite. Oh yeah. Mmm. Wow. That is really good. Tastes just like rockfish. Wow. That recipe is bomb. Oh my god. Oh yeah. That butter infused with that garlic. Woo! I thought that eel was just the right size for me to eat. Actually, happened after having this? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, I definitely wish it was bigger. Oh, yeah. All right, man, let's try the crab. This huge crab leg. One thing I love about crab is when they come out and you could have the whole piece of claw like that and one whole big piece comes out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's bomb. Wow. Not as sweet as Dungeness crab, but man, this is a treat right now. After hiking for five miles, haven't eaten since, you know, five in the morning. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I'm gonna sit back and enjoy this meal. Oh yeah. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, thumbs up claws up, subscribe, hit the notification button, and uh, let me know what other videos you guys want to see. This is a good meal.